automotive ethernet for the rest of us what is automotive ethernet who uses automotive ethernet why use automotive ethernet and some technologies to know who am i xavier d johnson otherwise known as infinite on twitter born and raised in the motown hacking around since about 12 first mentor for team 94 uh, techno jays uh, organizer of dc313 director for my sec detroit and i host a show on youtube called how the guy hack enough about me let's dig into what exactly is automotive ethernet so electronics in a car they're split up into these things called domains powertrain domain body and comfort domain the human machine interface driver assistance chassis these things uh, do anything from control steering and braking all the way to controlling your radios and your windows and your seating, uh, as well as allowing uh, uh, humans to be able to interface with controls um, that uh, via interfaces, things that actually control the machine. Automotive, automotive Ethernet is a physical network that is used to connect components within a car using wires. So why was... Ethernet not used in vehicles before now. Well, Ethernet didn't meet the OEM uh, requirements for the automotive market. Uh, basically, 100 megabits per second and above Ethernet has too much radio frequency noise, too much alien noise on the wire uh, for uh, from other devices inside of the car. So Ethernet cannot guarantee uh, low latency due to the low microsecond range uh, that is required by vehicles. And uh, this was a, a hard requirement to replace any communication that needs fast uh, reaction times. Also, there was no way for Ethernet uh, to be able to do time syncing between devices and having multiple devices sample data at the same rate. So, uh, what are some of the use cases for automotive Ethernet then? Well, um, the, the the different drivers of automotive Ethernet come from, uh, of course, those domains that we spoke about, about earlier, um, the complexity uh, of, of the components and the, the wiring harness to a vehicle. Uh, the wiring harness is actually the third costliest and third heaviest component in a vehicle, right? So talking about cost, um, there's been a joint study between Broadcom and Bosch that uh, estimated using UTP uh, cable to deliver data rate at a, a, a data at a rate of 100 megabits per second, along with the smaller and more compact connectors, can reduce connectivity cost up to 80 uh, percent and cabling weight down by 30 percent. So um, you know when we talk about uh, the data rates via uh, unshielded twisted pair you know the, uh, the electronics and cars are becoming much more complicated more controllers more sensors more interfaces and all of this stuff requires higher bandwidth so um, these are some of the drivers behind the motivate main motivators behind using automotive ethernet so technologies uh, that are entering the automotive space include self-driving connected cars augmented reality vehicle to vehicle communications um, and, and things like self-driving require lasers and radars that can process anything, uh, things much more faster uh, than humans can and, and more reliably than humans. Uh, and, and we can use these tools and these advancements to be able to do things uh, more efficiently and more effectively on the road, doing things like platooning where cars get close to one another uh, to, to, so that they can occupy um, less space on the road. And parking very closely in parking spaces. Um, augmented reality, things like dashboards for the driver to be able to look through the windshield and see things at a distance and be able to understand exactly you know, what those things are and categorize them and how far exactly they are away, and how fast the driver's moving towards it. Um, if there's danger, you know, arrows could appear and let you know exactly how to avoid the danger. Um, and then these technologies are considered for passengers as well, right? Connected cars, which we're living through right now with the advancements in cellular and Wi-Fi connectivity, um, this allows us to be able to communicate and do video streaming uh, as well as remote diagnostics and updating firmware, uh, which require usually require access to the internal networks and computers in cars. 
So uh, vehicle and vehicle communi vehicle to vehicle communications allow cars to be able to speak to one another. The NHTSA estimates that by using V2V, 79% of target vehicle crashes would be avoided. So um, that we're talking about huge benefits and safety just by allowing us to be able to increase the amount of technology censoring in the vehicles, but we're gonna have to have networks that can actually handle that bandwidth and capability. Uh, digging deeper into these technologies, right? So AutoSAR, the Automotive Open System Architecture, one pair ethernet, otherwise known as open, power over ethernet or PoE, uh, energy efficient ethernet, EEE, uh, time synchronization, as we talked about that being a problem before, AV bridging, diagnostics over AP, which uh, IP, which is extremely exciting, um, and time triggered ethernet. So digging into AutoSAR, it's an open standardized automotive architecture jointly developed by manufacturers and tool developers. Uh, TCP, UDP, IP stack that is used in automotive uh, uh, components and is basically the standard that all of the, uh, the automotive industry came together and decided to, to agree on versus just fragmenting out and working in silos. Uh, Broadcom made a, uh, a physical chip, uh, PHY, a standard called Broad R Reach. Uh, this is allowing us to be able to enable longer distance copper ethernet connectivity at a sustained 100 megabits per second. Um, it's using technology uh, from 1GE copper, including uh, multi-level PAM3 signaling, better encoding, echo cancelers. Um, these allow for bi-directional data flows uh, on a single pair. Due to lower bandwidth, this standard met the automotive EMI requirements and Broadcom started marketing this to the automotive world. Power over Ethernet. Uh, it's used to further reduce the wiring needed since you can actually power the end devices as well as uh, sending data over that, that wire at the same time. Uh, so you're, you're able to power the device as well as get data over it without need, the need for having extra wiring to power the device. Energy efficient Ethernet. Um, so, you know, when you're dealing with cars, not all of the electrical components turn off when the engine is turned off. So with that being said, you have a drain on the battery. And to minimize that um, energy efficient Ethernet turns off the network when it's not in use. So the components that don't need to be powered on stay off until the engine turns on. Uh, this is this is to help with uh, minimize minimizing power consumption. Um, and then, so time synchronization, we talked about this. Time is a must. It needs to be synchronized between all the nodes in the car. So the uh, IEEE -E 802AS, um, 802.1AS, timing and synchronization for time-sensitive applications and bridge local area networks is the standard um, to, to actually synchronize timing. This uses a profile and introduces simpler, faster methods for choosing a master clock. Time-triggered Ethernet. Many controls in the car require communication latency in a single microsecond range, literally, so controllers can get sensor readings to control functions of vehicles. And if we're talking about self-driving cars, we wanna make sure that the sensors have communication latency that is extremely low. So time trigger ethernet simplifies the design of this, creates fault tolerance and high availability. The safety and redundancy are maintained upstream at the network level without any need for the application to be involved. So for AV bridging, 802.1 QAT, also known as stream reservation, is a simple protocol to notify the various network elements in a path to reserve the resources needed to supply a particular stream. And 801.1 QAV, the queuing and forwarding for AV bridges, defines rules to ensure that an AV stream will pass through the networks within the delayed specified time in the reservation. ISO 13400 is a standard that is adopted by the automotive industry to both read out diagnostics from the computers in the car, 
and update firmware in a car. So this covers our diagnostics over IP portion. The protocols run over TCP IP and are used both on dedicated diagnostics ethernet connections as well as over the air system such as GM OnStar. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that you learned a few new things about automotive ethernet. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to hit me up on Twitter.